Why are we talking about this? So I, I thought it would be a, a cool thing to do a talk on the CSA because um, it kind of, in my mind, aligned with some of what attracts people to the plug, right? It's very cool engineering. Um, there's some cool career development. Um, and uh, it's mostly solutions architecture, which, you know, who doesn't like whiteboarding about things? So the CSA, as, as the uh, top level, it's $150, it's 65 questions, it's multiple choice, um, it's got some of the annoying ones where it's like, uh, it's got five questions and you need to pick two of them, one of those type of deals, uh, where one of them is really obvious, right, so A is definitely the case. I can see B being the question, uh, being the answer, and also D. So it's 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 got some very frustrating questions where they really want you to know what the answer is uh, because you've had that experience, so you can kind of work through those questions. Um, it heavily favors customer scenarios, so it's not this test is not like, hey, what does the dash X flag do in Amazon, the AWS CLI. It's more like, hey, this customer wants to move this workload up to a AWS, and um, uh, it's a non-redundant workload, and what type of instances would you use because they can rebuild it, and you know, so it's that type of thing where it, it, it's heavily favoring uh, scenarios that people are actually doing. Actually, that's like 100% of the test is all scenarios. So like. 65 questions of how would you do this? It's very challenging. It's a very challenging cert. Um, I know a few folks who have who have failed it, um, and there is one free retry, I believe. But it, it's a very challenging cert because it's not something that you can just mm. maybe go in and memorize some some questions and answers. It's all thought-provoking scenarios. So some of the things that it's heavily focused on um, are the correct way to do things. So uh, one of the more frustrating parts of the test, uh, which is they probably designed it this way, is that they will give answers to questions that would work, right? So you could do it this way, but that's not the correct way to do it. It might be slightly more cost effective to do it this way, and that's the answer to the question. Um, so there's a lot of questions that are kind of like that. Uh, it heavily focuses on networking. Um, uh, so that's your virtual private cloud that you build in AWS. So in AWS, you can design your own network. So you can pick a networking uh, CIDR and you can uh, create subnets, public, private, you know, internet facing, not internet facing, you can peer VPCs together, you can peer networks together, you can peer your own data center with AWS and keep your, na your uh, network namespaces in AWS so it's completely seamless. Uh, so they do a lot of questions on networking. Um, that would be one of the, the top things that I would study for. They do a lot of questions on queuing theory. So a lot of questions on decoupling applications and decoupling solutions. That's a very, very big focus area for Amazon is to not run everything in a monolithic stack, but to have many, many microservices and a strong queue in between everything. So that way, if one part of your stack builds up, it queues instead of slowing everything down. So queuing, that's SQS, simple queue service as the service. Uh, load balancing, load balancing obviously is a very, very important topic for AWS. Uh, in AWS you can provision load balancers with a click and you can uh, do all sorts of things with them, health checks, round robin, you know, any kind of uh, load balancing algorithm that's fairly popular, um, and that's called the Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, so that's something that there's a lot of questions on. Uh, compute, obviously, your where your Linux servers are going to live, EC2. 
Um, there's a lot of questions on pricing in EC2s, right? So there's um, within the EC2 realm, there's like kind of regular instances, uh, and then there's spot instances. So like, let's say that you want to, you know, rent a Linux server, a particular Linux server, and it normally costs, you know, fifty cents an hour. You can put a, a bid in and say, I want to rent that Linux server by the hour for twenty-one cents. So that's what I'm, all I'm going to pay is I'm going to pay twenty-one cents for that Linux server per hour. And they're normally fifty cents, but as the market and the ebb and flow of their marketplace, you know, goes up and goes down, it could drop down to nineteen cents. And now you're paying twenty-one cents, and your stack, you know, pops up. Maybe it's like a development environment that can, you don't care that it goes down. So, so those 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 types of instances, um, and then there's like reserved instances that maybe you're paying for three years total. You're going to pay up front for three years, or pay up front for a year. So there's a lot of questions about pricing and how you design, um, how you, you would design that, uh, the different types of instances. So it's not so much about like um, specific questions about AMIs and stuff like that, but it's, uh, which is like their machine images. But a lot of it is about you know this pricing model and how you would actually architecture that. Um, the CSA is a great introduction to the AWS ecosystem. So if you pass this certification, you will have a very, very strong grasp on AWS. Uh, you'll be able to speak intelligently about cloud computing, about AWS, about their strengths, and about what's great about Amazon, and then what's not so great about Amazon. So it's very, very great for that. Um, and it's hard to fake it until you make it. So a lot of certifications, you might be able to you know, maybe find a study guide like LPIC or Cloud Essentials or Linux Plus, um, and you can kind of fake your way through it. This is very hard to fake your way through it because it's it's more about the thought process of the architecture rather than knowing what the dash C flag and SMB client does. So you're saying it's more conceptual and like critical thinking than it would be for just straight up memorization. Correct. Okay. Yep. Oh, good. That makes it easier for me. <laughs> so, I, I pulled some information. I, I, this is the last door, but I corroborated it with some other sources. That actually should be higher. I just ran the numbers myself uh, recently. This is just a, this is just an average. So, on average, uh, of two hundred and eleven salaries in our Philadelphia community, uh, an Amazon Solutions architect can make, an, on average, one hundred and sixteen grand. Um, between 87 and 151. So, <clears throat> the reason I put this up is it's a very good skill to have. Well, how many of those jobs are at Comcast? I don't know. If you, if you go look right now, there's 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 a lot of uh, solutions architecture jobs out there, and I didn't see. I mean, maybe some of them are Comcast, but a lot of them are just other companies. Okay. Um, Where's ATS on that pay scale? Um, we're, just, we're a small company. So. And that means? <laughs> it means we have small company culture, you know? Um, so and? <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't have Amazon Solutions Architects, so we wouldn't even be involved in this. Well, we do, but, you know, we don't have... So you don't count? Well... <laughs> How much do you make? <laughs> <laughs> 30 grand a um, so, so there's, um, so there's great incentives to, to, to learning this and to getting the certification. Um, I know just looking at job postings about this before, having the CSA is, is uh, a requirement of those solutions architecture jobs. So, how to prepare. How would you take this exam and reliably pass it? Um, 150 bucks. Uh, is on the pretty medium size of certifications. It's about how much they run um, until you get into the, like, the higher end ones. So you don't want to be shelling out $150 you know, four or five times to get this passed. So you want to make sure you can do it correctly. So the four ways that, that help me uh, is Linux Academy, uh, which is a great resource that ATS uses internally for our own internal training. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. 
AWS itself, <coughs> tutorials, and flashcards. Let's go through each one. Hey, Andy, really stupid question. Sure. This exam is completely online, I assume. Uh, it's at a testing. It's online. It's at a testing center. So okay. it's using their. It has to be proctored. Yeah, it's proctored. Okay. Proctor. Yep. I, that, that, that's how I used to take them. I haven't done one in a long time. I was wondering yep. if that had changed. So guess not. No, yeah. Mine was in Karen Prussia. It's the one I chose, and it was in a little shithole of a place. It was in a little closet, <laughs> and you can't leave for anything. And smelled and the carpet was stained and that's the testing center. So. This is being recorded by the way. <laughs> I didn't say where I took it. No. Sure. Yeah, but I'll be taking the same spot. I would hope one. No, there's <laughs> testing centers for, for AWS CSA since it's all multiple choice and there's no hands on. You can take take this thing anywhere. There's tons of locations. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Linux Academy, um, it's a great resource in my opinion uh, for the AWS CSA. Um, it's very cheap in my opinion. Um, it's got really knowledgeable speakers. So the guy who does the AWS CSA is one of the owners or founders or you know principals of the Linux Academy um, uh, you know company. Um, he's very engaging um, and uh, very well articulate uh, articulated uh, everything that I thought was important to take the CSA. Um, I don't know what the prices are because we pay. We have like we have like thirty people on our account, um, but I I think it's something like maybe thirty bucks a month or something like that. Um, but it's got some really cool features. So one of the coolest features for the AWS CSA is they have a so you would do a module and then they have a lab. Well, they have the module like where he's going to talk to you like a professor, right? And yeah, da 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 da, and then he uh, will have a quiz. So you can quiz yourself. Uh, and then there's a hands-on lab. So the hands-on lab is really cool because it'll actually spin things up inside Amaz uh, in Amazon and have you do things through Linux Academy um, and you can kind of do exactly what he just talked about. Uh, so for example, an IAM, which is identity management, like users and groups and roles, um, you, you, would, you would listen to the lecture and then you might do all the things that he just talked about. Create a user, create a role, make, you know, add this user to this group, add this server to this role so it can talk to this. So um, it's not so much just listening to someone talk, but it's very, very engaging. So I, I, I was really pleased with that. It's got a really cool engaging flashcard system. So um, if you're a fan of flashcards, every module within Linux Academy or every sort of course, in this case it would be the CSA, has the instructor's flashcards, which is like 500 flashcards. It's like, what does S3 mean? What does SQS stand for? What does SNS stand for? What does EC2 stand for? Stuff like that, or like certain scenarios where the, the, the flashcards are pretty long. Um, so there's the instructor flashcards, but then it's all community sourced and it's upvoted, kind of like Reddit, right? So there's like 40 different flashcards for that, like for that course, and whoever has the best flashcards, either the instructors or the people who went through the, the certification and got it, they created their own flashcards that, that get upvoted. So uh, I can, I'll show you that a little bit later, uh, but it's, it's a cool way to kind of get a variety of, of information in a crowdsource. I found the practice tests very accurate. Um, they're not, um, you know, it's not like he, they've got the questions and answers, uh, but they, uh, it's very, very close to the actual test because it's scenarios and thought-provoking questions about solutions architecture. So it was very, um, very, uh, very close. And there's a structured curriculum. So you would activate the course or whatever or sign up for your your subscription and when you click on AWS CSA the first thing it says is you have a much better chance of success if you go through a structured curriculum so you can say I want to devote you know five hours a week to Linux Academy and then it, and you can pick your days and pick your time slots and then it kind of keeps you on track so like three weeks into it you can see how how far you are off of where you should be and at five hours a week, it's going to take you, 
you know, four weeks to complete this course and you can kind of keep track and make sure that you're keeping up and, you know, not allowing life and work and, you know, to kind of get in your way of your certification. Here's a screenshot, but I'm gonna I'm actually gonna log in. I'm gonna show you it anyway, so because resolution is crappy. Uh, AWS, um, AWS like all other cloud providers has a free tier. So uh, it's free as in beer because if you go over what you should, you will get charged for it. And in order to sign up, you need a credit card. So they got you on file. Um, so it's really cool because most of their services have a free tier, like. On their EC2, their server uh, service, you know, you can rent a one CPU, one gig of RAM Linux server, and that can run all year long, and you won't get paid, you won't get charged for it. Um, if you have two of them, then you'll get charged for it. Or, you know, if you're if you over your allocated, you know, burst credits or how much you're using it, you'll get charged for it. But for the most part, if you're using it for learning and education, you can get away with doing all of this and utilizing all the services and doing your own solutions architecture on your own account for pretty much free. Um, so tutorials, um, in our own company what we found people who are interested in AWS and um, the work that we're starting to do in that space, um, what we did is we, we set up just a list of things that you know we want our folks to do. So. Um, go to AWS and implement a Linux server. And then implement a Linux cluster behind a load balancer and serve traffic. Uh, and then set up a database. And then set up a managed database uh, using Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, or Aurora. Uh, set up a queuing system. So decouple um, your web servers from your app servers from your databases. Um, set up an analytics platform and ingest data from different sources and feed them into other sources. Set up a virtual private cloud from scratch. Your network, your subnets, your zones, private and public, your you know, floating IPs and stuff like that. So um, we found that going through tutorials and doing these things is absolutely invaluable to passing this certification. And you can mostly do it for free. Uh, oh, I missed one. Hold on. <coughs> I already talked about the flashcards, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so any questions? And after the questions, I'll, I'll show you some stuff. If we have time. Alright, so. Uh, quick question. Sure. How much does it cost for the development instance or development subscription after your free tier uh, expires after one year? There is no development subscription <coughs> in AWS. You just pay. You, you just pay per everybody else. That is not true, actually. You're, if you're talking about the development, the developer support license, that's separate. That's getting support for the things. No, they have a developer instance. I couldn't remember what that was. I know the enterprise instance per license for that for the developers for enterprise is in the $4,500 per month. I know that I just couldn't remember the cost for what developer instance. Developer instance for what? It's essentially the same thing as free tier, used for learning, that kind of stuff um, that you can use for like the first year. For like what though? Like for what, what service? For what service? Like EC2, you can for a uh, service for like yeah. a nickel an hour or whatever. For I mean, they have you know hundred different services. Like, what are you paying for? Uh, I think they give you. It's basically supposed to, uh, it's supposed to be like developer if you're like a, a developer access for all of it. Uh, it's something that they cover more in the. Uh, in the developer training for the uh, um, was it? It's the Amazon developer, or uh, was it? It's yeah. There's the development yeah. cert, the sysops cert, and then the solutions architecture cert. Right? Yeah. But I, I'm not aware of any. I mean, what do you just pay? You X? pay like a monthly like flat fee, and the thing is, it's like your entire development instance can be ripped up, that kind of stuff. Um, like it's it's, but you just pay a flat fee for just general access. You can't really use it for too much other than what you would ever use the free tier for. I think you might be confused with something else. I've never heard that. Well, I could be wrong. Yeah, because I mean, I've used, and it's not just for messing around, you just, you, because, I mean, there is no, I mean, it's all designed for developers, right? I mean, it's all, everything's got to be yeah, EI or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's just, you, you create an account and you 
pay as you go. It's sort of a. I mean, unless you need like a you know, 128 core Xeon with eight GPUs and yeah. 75 terabytes of RAM or something, the costs per hour aren't that much. So, so this is uh, Linux Academy. So, um, just to, just disclaimer: I don't, we don't have any sort of, I don't have any vested interest in Linux Academy. They're not paying me to do this. I we use Linux Academy for our own internal. Um, training for uh, folks who are maybe cross training on Linux or they, they want to get their cloud certifications or whatever um, but uh, we found it's the best um, platform for a very diverse uh, set of um, uh, things like cloud and Linux and um, you know, Azure or Kubernetes containers etc um, so when you go to Linux Academy, I know the resolution stinks, so bear with me. Um, you get all, there's all different types of courses, um, and the one we're looking at is the AWS Cert Certified Solutions Architecture Associate. And I did forget to mention that this is the Associate Cert. There is a professional cert, so it's the CSAP, and it is a much harder, more in-depth uh, certification uh, I have not gotten yet. Um, so, so some of the cool things about the AWS um, course, um, so there's the hands-on labs, which I talked about, the mm -hmm. practice exam, uh, flashcards. Uh, so if I, for example, um, so there's all these, um, so this is like a module, like the, what is the AWS account, physical organization, and then there's this. And then when you get down here, there's the quizzes, and then there's the hands-on lab. So building a VPC from scratch uh, is a hands-on lab where you would actually do that, which is, you know, building a VPC from scratch is very, very important in, uh, for this certification. That's something that you definitely want to do. Okay. Um, and then, so if we go to flashcards, I just wanted to show you the crowdsource um, flashcards. So um, this is the instructor deck, so if I were to view this, it kind of looks like this, right? So um, you can get the, sorry, the question is X, and then you can say, oh, this is great, and then you, know, you can keep going down. So what is S3IA? And then it kind of tells you what it is and what it means. Uh, so that's the instructor deck, and then there's like popular decks, like this person, Lou, created a really great deck, and he probably passed the CSA and people want to view his deck because he passed the CSA so you can view his deck and different content. So I really like it because it's a variety, like I said, it's a variety of information from different sources, from different, having different perspectives. Um, so uh, CSA is, is really cool. Um, AWS in general, I just want to show you that real quick. So if, if you're not familiar with AWS, um, this is kind of what the splash screen looks like, and they have all these different types of services, right? So all of these services are, are what you're being tested on. Um, there's a couple that they really, really focus in on, um, right? You're not going to be quizzed on um, the Amazon game service where you can host your, your game uh, platform or, you know, work mail or things like that, but it's mostly the popular ones like EC2, S3, uh, EFS, DynamoDB, which is like their MongoDB kind of equivalent. Um, so when you sign up for a free account, um, you, can, you can access the exact same interface and deploy things for free. Uh, and that's one of the great ways to study for this is, is you can do it all for free and uh, this is kind of what it looks like. Any questions? Yeah? All right, that's all I got. Yay beer! <laughs> <laughs> Things that should not be on the... Uh...